Welcome to our series on this computer application technology or CAT PRAC exam, paper one from November 2024 for grade 12s. This is our fourth video. We've done two on Word and one on Excel. This video will also be on Excel. Just a reminder, it's probably a good idea to give this paper a try. Use the link in the video description to download the data files and the question paper. Try out the questions and then come back to the video and check out which questions you struggle with. That's probably going to be the best way to help you study for these exams. So let's get into question four. So here we have question four. They give you the details about what you should be doing for your Excel spreadsheets. And we're going to open up the spreadsheet called four shows and always make sure that you are working in the correct worksheet, especially if the spreadsheet has multiple worksheets. You don't want to be doing the wrong things to the wrong sheet. So if I open up the file, I've got it open over here and you can see two worksheets. So we are in sheet one because that's the one they want us to work in. And we're going to straight away going to say rename sheet one to shows. So Always one of my rules for anything to do with, with Microsoft is when in doubt, right click. So I'm going to right click on that and there you can see the word rename and we're going to rename that to shows and then click away and there we go. 4.2, insert a function in D3 to determine the fourth highest number of people that will attend the show. So let's go find, there's D3. We want the, the fourth most number of people that are gonna attend one of these shows. So each of these are different shows. So we want the fourth highest. So if we want the fourth highest, so we don't want the largest, which is the max, we want the fourth highest. So that is our large function. So if I come over here, we can type in equals large, and we are looking at the column for the number of people, which is this G column. So we go all the way to the bottom. And we are looking in that range, but we're looking for the, not the first, not the second, not the third, but the fourth highest. So that number after the range will be whichever number you want in a range. For example, you want the fourth or the fifth, then you put that there. So answer is 79. 4.3, insert a function in D5 to calculate the total number of people who will be attending the Milky Way shows. So the key thing here is look at three marks. So they're going to be a function with three parameters. So over here in D5, we want to count all the people, the total number of people. So we want to sum those values, but only sum them if they are attending the Milky Way shows. So they're the different shows. You can see some of them are Milky Way. So we only want, so we want to look here and go, okay, Milky Way, we're going to add that three. That's not Oh, there's another one. We're going to add that 24. So we basically sum in this column, but only if this column is the word Milky Way. So that's a sum if function. So we're going to equal sum if. Now it's first, where are you looking first? We are first looking in this column and then what are we looking for? And then where do we go to add the numbers from? So I'm gonna select this range, which is our blue range, which is column B. And we are looking, so I'm gonna put a comma over here. We're looking for the word Milky Way. I'm gonna type it in like it is in that cell, Milky Way. Remember your criteria must be in double quotes. And then once I've written the word Milky Way, then where do I want to add the number? So if this block is Milky Way, where must we go to add? So we're gonna add the G column. So I'm selecting all of those values in the G column, which is now like this orange or red block and make sure that the numbers match up. So it's 10 to 62, 10 to 62. So they do match up nicely. So we look here in the blue column, if we find a Milky Way, we move across to the red column to add that number. Find another Milky Way, add up the red column. Find another Milky Way, add up the red column. So there we go. 4.4, insert a function in cell C10 to determine the session for this person, Peter Zabi, use the show time and the session worksheet. So what does that mean? It's four marks, so it's gonna be more complicated than a sum if, which we just did. So in C10, we're gonna come here, C10, there we go. We need to know what session they are in and how do we know what session they are. If I come over here, you can see that each session is either morning, afternoon, or night, depending on the time of the session. So where do we get the time? Of, ooh, so there's the show time. So as you can see, the morning shows, 9.30, you can see any time after 9.30 would be a morning show. Any time between those two would be considered morning. Any time between those two would be afternoon. Any time after that would be night. So that's what we're looking at. So in this block, we're gonna say equals. So so we are looking for that time in this table. So we're gonna go down the table and then when we find the range that we like, we're gonna move across. So this is a vertical lookup, a V lookup. We're going vertically down and then moving across. If our values were going across like this and then we wanna go down to another block, that would be a horizontal lookup. So this is going to be a V lookup or flookup and we are looking for that time 
So we're looking for that time. I'm going to put comma. Where are we looking for that time? We are looking for that time inside of the session worksheet. And we are looking, there's our table. Now don't include the headers, just the data. So I'm selecting column A and column B. So there we go. And then this is where you've got to be very careful. Don't go and click back on shows. We stay here. I'm going to put a comma now after my session. And then which column are we getting the data from? We are going to get the column. This is column one. This is column two. I want to indicate which word is the session so i'm looking at column two so i'll put it two now the range look up here is where you put true or false if i put a comma here you can see it's true if it's an appropriate match false if it's an exact match so it defaults to true if we want an exact match if it must be nine o'clock exactly for it to be morning session then we're going to put the word false but if it could be within that range, which we saw earlier, it said 9.30 was morning. So it doesn't have to be exactly 9. It's going to just be in that range, approximate match, which it is true. Then we can leave it true. You actually don't even need to put the true in there. You can just leave it like it is. It defaults to true. But if you want it to be an exact match, then you would put the false. So you would look up that time in this block. And when you find an approximate match, you move across to column two. So I'll press enter. And there we can see that half past five, if we look here, half past five would definitely be the night session now you probably aren't going to copy this down but if we had to copy it down just so for interest sake, if i had to copy that down the data is not going to work and the reason for that is because that session table is going to go to a3 b5 and then a3 b6 so we want that block to always remain that block which means we're going to put absolute cell referencing around that block. We still want the F10 to become F11. We want to compare the different times, but that block must always stay that block. So I'm gonna press F4 there around those two cells just to make sure that we put the dollar signs around them. See, it doesn't change the answer, but what's nice is if I drag it down, you see it will then calculate the other sessions based on those times. So we can see that we are getting the same results. So there we go. That would technically be the correct answer. I'm not sure if they're allocating marks for the cell referencing, but if they ever did ask you to copy it down, you going to need to do that if you want it to work and there we are and then 4.5 insert a formula in d12 to determine the number of days from the current date until the show begins so we're going to go to d12 the number of days from the current date until the date of the show now take note i am doing this exam paper in 2025 and this paper was supposed to be written in 2024 so when this exam was being written it was under the assumption that these shows are going to happen in the future technically if this was this year so i'm going to change that to 2025 just so that it pretends that we are doing it in this year you don't have to do that i'm just showing you for example so that's probably what they experienced they saw that the show is still coming up so which is the later date the date of the show or the current date so the show would have been a later date so to work out the number of days we're going to take the later date and subtract today's date which you can just type in the word today open close bracket there we go and then it's going to give us today's date when you take two dates and you minus them you get a fig i mean you get the number of days between those two dates so there you can see it was 173 days from today until that date if it was going to be that date so I know it's a bit awkward to do this because we're doing this a year later, but the idea behind this exam was that those dates are still to happen. All of these dates would have occurred after the actual exam date. So it's the number of days until that show because you've booked in that show obviously in advance. So I just did that just so that we can see that we got a value. If we kept it 2024, you'll see we get a negative number because we are past that date. And so if we take that date minus today's date, then we have gone past it by 192 days. So just something to be aware of when you're doing an old exam paper. And so remember, whenever you take two dates and you subtract them, you get the number of days between those dates. But you always want the later date to be first, the date that's furthest in the future minus the date closest to you. So, for example, if you want to work out the number of days between today and your birthday, your birthday is still to come. So your, your birthday is the furthest date minus today's date. So let's go to 4.6, the last question. And it looks like it's quite a complicated one. So let's have a look. The final cost is calculated by multiplying the cost per person with the number of people and then give a discount if, if applicable. So the cost is the number of people times it by the cost per person. So we can see there's a cost per person and the number of people. So in J10, we're going to put a formula. So if I come here, J10, there's J10. So it's 
that's the cost per person. There's three people going. So how do we work out the final cost? They say we're going to use a nested if, which means there's going to be lots of ifs within ifs. If the session is a morning session and the organization is a school, they get a 5% discount. If the organization is not that, but they're just a business, they're going to get a 3% discount. If it's any other situation, there is no discount given. Okay, so that is a nested if. So we first want to check this condition and then apply a 5% discount. Then we want to check if it's if it's not that, then it must be check if it's a business. And if it's a business, we're going to do a 3% discount. And if it's not, then we're just going to give them the normal price. So let's try work that out. So I'm going to use a building block here just to make my life a bit easier. So the actual cost, so the number of people is going to be equal to the number of people multiplied by the cost per person. So that is how much the show costs. G10 times about R10. So I've got that in a block over here. Now to work out the first if statement, I'm going to say equals if. Now we're going to do our test. We're going to ask a question and what must happen if it's true? What must happen if it's false? Now you'll look here. There is two conditions. There's a morning session and the organization must be a school. So we're going to check if it's a morning session and if the organization is a school so there's two things we want to check if i want to check two things we're going to use the and operator the and operator allows us to ask multiple questions so i'm going to ask the first question is is session the block called c10 equal to the text morning that's my first criteria is c10 equal to morning comma what's my second criteria my second criteria is if h 10 equals to the text school. So and means both of those must be true. So if it's morning and it's school, then I can put a comma. Now I'm going to write what must happen if it's morning and it's school. And it says here that the school gets a 5% discount. So we need to put this must work out the final cost. It's so we work out the final cost with the discount. So it's not just working out what the discount amount is. It's working out what the cost is minus that uh, discount. So how do I know what the cost is? Well, I've got I've worked out the cost right there. So it's that cost minus 5% of that cost. So how do I work out 5%? It's 5 divided by 100. Or you could have said 0 0.05. That would have been the same thing. Multiplied by the cost as well, which is L10 as well. So we're going to say 5% times about that. That'll be the discount amount. We take the original price minus the 5%. That's going to be the 5% discount. That's going to be what must happen if it's a morning and a school. Close bracket. Now let's just put zero there just for interest. So if it's not that, it's going to put zero. So let's just see what it looks like. So at the moment it's zero. Why? Because the session is night and the organization is private. But for example, if I had changed this to the word morning and I change this to the word school, do you see it now works out a value which is probably 5% less than that because it's morning and school. So there we can see it is working. So let's undo that. If it's not that scenario, then it's going to either be this scenario or that scenario. So the other scenario is if the organization is a business. So I'm going to put a brand new if statement in place of that zero. So I'm going to put a new if statement in there equals if. And let's be careful now. We're going to write down what is the criteria. Well, in this case, we're looking if the organization equals the word business. And if that is true, if it equals to business, then we're going to get a 3% discount, which means we're going to take this block and we're going to subtract 3%, which is 3 divided by 100. Or you could type in 0 0.03 multiplied by that cell L10. So take 3% of the total and subtract it from the total to get the 3%. So that's the scenario if H10 is a business. If it's not a business, and it's not morning and school. So this is, we are in the false part of this if statement. So that's what we're doing over there. If it's not any of those, then no discount is given. You're just going to pay the original price, which is the cost multiplied by the number of people, which is exactly that price. And then we need to close the bracket. Now you see there is a bracket there, but we need to close this if statement first. And then that bracket is for the bigger if statement. So if it's true, if this is true, it'll do that statement and stop. If it's false, if it's not morning and school, it must be both. If it's not morning and school, it's going to jump to this part. Check if it's business. If it's true, it'll do that part. If it's not true, it'll jump to just the L10. So let's test it. So it's 65 because it is not as you can see, a morning and school. So it's not the first criteria and it's private. So it's not the second criteria. So it's going to be the original price. If I change this to the word business, 
you can see that it gets a little discount because it's not morning in school, but it is a business. So it'll get a minus 3% discount. And if we, as we saw earlier, if we change it to the word school and we change that to morning and press enter, now you'll see it's an even bigger discount, which is going to be the 5% discount. So let's undo, undo, undo our changes. So there we go. So I think that is the correct answer. You could have, instead of L10, had G10 times about R10, all those different times. That would have been fine as well, but it gets quite complicated. So don't be afraid to use your building blocks over here. You could have used, like, for example, this is what the cost is with 5%. This is the cost for 3% and then just refer to those blocks. That could have also worked as well. I think that's all they want for that question. There we go. That question's done. We're now going to move on to our access question, our database question. Always remember, make sure you save and let's go access the database question. We have tons of videos on our YouTube channel which you can use to revise the concepts we showed in this video. So make sure you subscribe to Atmos Long RT and Cat. Go check out the playlist. We've got tons of help that will help you for your exams. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.